I really like him though. And I don't care. I don't care who he's dating. I always had a crush on him. Yet another day has gone by, bringing with it another piece of potential evidence suggesting Jay's alleged involvement in poisoning an artist. Recent reports suggest that Blue Cantrell may have uncovered irrefutable proof against Jay in connection to the poisoning incident. While this might not be shocking for those familiar with Jay's history of such controversies, the significance lies in the complexity and mystery surrounding this triangular narrative. Yeah, just go around just you know, sleeping with guys like that because it might not even get you anywhere, you know? You have to be, you have to be smart about it. Navigating the R&B scene can be a challenging endeavor. If you're not following the trend of bearing it all or executing seductive moves as Christina Millian once advised, though that approach didn't propel her career much, gaining the recognition you deserve becomes an uphill battle. In an industry where appeal often trumps raw talent, genuine artistic prowess can struggle to captivate the ever-fickle public's attention. Think of anybody you know, that should be there, just let me know, and I'll get them on the list. If you heeded Blue Cantrell's advice from her 2001 hit, Hit em Up Style, Oops, you'd know that when your man wanted to get buck wild, hitting him where it hurt, his pockets, was the way to go. That nugget of wisdom had women everywhere blasting her jam from their car stereos. However, after dropping the single and the album So Blue in 2001 and Bittersweet in 2003 featuring the Sean Paul-assisted Breathe, Blue Cantrell seemed to vanish. Or did she really? Several years later, Cantrell explored acting, gracing the stage in productions like Gossip, Lies and Secrets, and even delving into reality TV on NBC's Celebrity Circus. Yes, it was exactly what you're thinking. Allegedly, Cantrell is leaving those pursuits behind to make a return to singing. It was also reported that in the studio with producer Deshaun Hendrickson, she was gearing up for a potential comeback. The burning question remains, will her return to the music scene be met with enthusiasm? In the early 2000s, Blue Cantrell was one of the biggest names in R&B, and even gave Beyonce a run for her money. The 90s and early 2000s marked an iconic era in pop culture. Von Dutch was a fashion sensation, blockbuster movies like The Notebook, Harry Potter, and the Fast and the Furious series captivated audiences, and everything seemed in perfect harmony. Amidst the soundtrack of that time, Hit 'Em Up Style, Oops! by Blue Cantrell dominated the airwaves. Blue, an R&B artist who initially gained recognition as a backup singer, rose to prominence in the late 90s after catching the attention of L.A. Reid. Her debut solo album quickly soared to the top of the Billboard charts. However, following the release of her second album in 2003, Blue Cantrell stepped away from the recording studio and the spotlight. The question arises, what happened to this Grammy-nominated songstress and what is she up to now? In subsequent years, the R&B star released a second album, Bittersweet, earning another Grammy nomination but struggling to capture the attention of fans. Unfortunately, after fading from the spotlight, much of the news surrounding the Rhode Island native took a negative turn. A failed attempt at a reality show on NBC, the resurfacing of racy photos from her past, and her experiencing a minor mental breakdown contributed to a series of unfavorable press coverage. As we anticipate whether she will make a genuine comeback Back, the journey for this artist has been marked by challenges and setbacks. Attention because you're around each other so much and you're fighting and you're nitpicking and definitely can relate to that. Collaboration is a significant aspect of the R&B genre, yet Blue Cantrell has conveyed a reluctance to join forces with today's stars in the industry. Specifically, she has expressed a disinterest in working with singers who heavily rely on electronic systems to maintain pitch accuracy. In a 2016 interview with Australia's The Music, Cantrell shared her perspective on the current state of R&B. She commented on the prevalent use of filters, describing the scene as played out and ridiculous. Her sentiments extended to the prevalence of lip-syncing and the widespread use of auto-tune, practices she adamantly opposes, emphasizing that they do not align with her personal style. Blue Cantrell remains steadfast in her refusal to embrace these modern techniques in her music. Everything is a little more filtered today, Cantrell said. I try to be nice when I say it's more filtered, she added. Everyone's lip-syncing and they're using auto-tune and it's something that I will never do. It's just not my style. I refuse to do that. Despite her reservations about the current state of R&B, Blue Cantrell still holds a fondness for the old stuff and has chosen to collaborate with artists
artists from her contemporaneous era. In an interview with The Music, she disclosed her involvement in a Christmas album featuring the voices of 90s R&B greats such as Angie Stone and Chanti Moore. However, it appears that this project may not have materialized or been released. For Cantrell to stage a successful comeback, she might need to consider embracing current musical trends, collaborating with hit-making producers, or even pioneering a new sound. Until such a reinvention occurs, the risk of remaining on the outskirts of the spotlight persists for the R&B artist. How do you feel about that? Do you feel like a bit proud that you've... No, I, 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 <laughs> I don't know about proud. I, I just feel like at least they're... It helped women. In an unexpected turn of events, Blue Cantrell, despite her evident talents, faced challenges in making headway in the bustling music scene of the Big Apple. However, fate smiled upon her during a chance visit to Atlanta to see her sister. While staying at a hotel in the city, Blue was approached in the lobby by someone who remarked on her resemblance to a singer, to which she replied, Well, actually, I am a singer. Despite initial skepticism that it might be a pickup line, the individual led her to Red Zone, where she showcased her vocal prowess. This encounter led to a record deal, with five different labels vying for her signature shortly thereafter. In the end, Blue chose to sign with Arista Records, although her enthusiasm may have played a role in sealing the deal a bit too swiftly. I think I always wanted to be a performer since I was very young. It, it was something that I knew I wanted to do. It was the only thing I ever did, actually. In the midst of all her success, Blue was constantly plagued with rumors that she had an intense feud with superstar Beyonce. Of course, Beyonce is arguably the biggest pop star in the world today. But in the early 2000s, Beyonce had just launched her solo career with the album Dangerously in Love and was in the early stages of her relationship with Jay-Z. And you made a choice to work with someone and you probably didn't realize how nefarious he was when you got involved with him, I didn't. Since Blue had a close friendship with Jay and was releasing chart-topping R&B singles right around the same time as Bay started to, it was only a matter of time before the whispers started. Blue insisted to anyone who asked that there was nothing going on between her and Jay, though she did once admit to Wendy Williams that she had a big crush on him. I still have a crush on him now, she spilled. I don't care who he's dating, I always had a crush on him. Rumors of a feud were fueled even further when Blue pointed out the similarities between her songs and Beyoncé's. In an interview with The Guardian, Blue Cantrell pointed out the striking similarities between Beyoncé and Jay-Z's music video for Bonnie and Clyde, and the promotional video for her own song, Round Up, which predated Beyoncé's release. This observation fueled further speculation about potential influences and comparisons between the two artists. Fortunately, I'm here to be able to say I'm doing it, so I feel very blessed. Adding an intriguing layer to the narrative, Blue drew attention to Beyonce's lyrics in the song Signs, where she whispers, I was in love with a Sagittarius. I've been hurt by a Pisces. It's worth noting that Jay-Z is a Sagittarius, while Blue is a Pisces. Blue delivered a warning to Beyonce at the time, suggesting that if the comparisons were intentional, it would be a misguided move. She asserted, maybe she's trying to do it to get press, but I want to make her understand. If she goes there with me, it's the wrong move. She needs to understand what she's doing and what she's getting into. I'm a master at singing. However, the last statement may be taken with a pinch of salt, as it reflects the intensity of the rumored feud. Moreover, many people suggest that their feud was initiated because of Blue's alleged affair with Jay-Z. During an appearance on Wendy Williams' talk show, the host hinted at the close nature of Blue Cantrell's relationship with Jay-Z. While Cantrell remained coy, she openly expressed her enduring crush on the Run This Town singer, saying, I still have a crush on him now. I don't care who he's dating, I always had a crush on him. This candid admission didn't sit well with Beyoncé, and the media quickly picked up on the possibility of a feud between the two women. Responding to Beyoncé's lyrics in which she mentioned being hurt by a Pisces Cantrell's astrological sign, Blue Cantrell labeled Beyoncé immature in an interview with The Guardian. In 2003, Blue Cantrell set the record straight regarding the rumors surrounding her relationship with Jay-Z. Speaking to The Guardian, Cantrell revealed, Me and Jay-Z were said to have been dating. It was major press. I have to say to you that we weren't. It seems people are saying, Beyonce Carter took him away from you. But that's not true because there was nothing to take. Jay-Z and I were just friends. This clarification aligns with information from the Twitter account Jay-Z Daily in 2020, which supported Cantrell's version of events, stating, Blue Cantrell and Jay-Z were never a thing. 
She had a crush on him though and said she wouldn't turn him down. But was it all planned by Beyonce to end Blue's career? Because it was obvious Blue was gaining success when Beyonce just joined the industry and she even was rumored to be with Jay-Z when Jay and Bay were just friends. With all this reported tension, it seems implausible that Beyonce would choose to name her firstborn daughter after Cantrell. Since the arrival of Blue Ivy Carter, the offspring of the influential power couple Beyonce and Jay-Z, the world has been abuzz with a burning question. Did legendary songstress Blue Cantrell have a hand in naming this celebrated offspring? I always listened to jazz as a child. It was something that was always in my house and, you know, uh, Manhattan Prince for her. Putting an official end to the swirling rumors, the hit em up style, oops, singer has taken to Twitter to address the relentless inquiries. The curiosity surrounding the naming of Beyonce and Jay-Z's child, Blue Ivy Carter, has been a subject of much speculation, and Blue Cantrell's tweet seems poised to provide clarity on this intriguing matter. Of course I want to say congratulations to Jay-Z and Beyonce on having a healthy and happy baby girl. I love her name. While the Cantrell confusion may have settled, the quest for the true inspiration behind the naming of Blue Ivy Carter is far from over. Despite attempts to reach additional suspects, such as the Blue Daba D, Hitmaker's Eiffel 65, Crayola, and the beloved Blue of Blue's Clues, responses have not been promptly received. Recent reports suggest a curious connection between the names Blue Cantrell and Blue Carter, as they share the same initials and a similar sound. There are speculations that Jay-Z still harbors emotions for Cantrell, a sentiment acknowledged by insiders in the industry. Beyonce, who may not be considered the most perceptive individual, could have interpreted the naming choice as a potential affront, especially since the baby was reportedly born via a surrogate. Rumors circulating in New York have long hinted at a past infidelity between Jay-Z and Cantrell. Given Jay-Z's well-known history of indiscretions, widely acknowledged in certain circles in New York, California, and Florida, it's somewhat surprising that he didn't opt for a name like Blue Rihanna Vashti Carter. However, people believe that Beyonce might have ended Blue's career because she is what is supposed to be an expert in. Her famous feud with Rihanna also clears things up. It appears that Beyonce holds a significant aversion towards Rihanna. Rihanna has disclosed that Beyonce used to provide her with frequent advice. And there was even an instance where Beyonce wrote her a letter. So has she given you any kind of advice or, or? Yeah, she actually wrote me this cute little letter and she signed it with her autograph. It was so cute. Um, now, it's widely known that for years, numerous rumors have circulated about Beyonce's discomfort when another female singer receives more attention than she does. When Rihanna began gaining more popularity than Beyonce, Queen Bey felt threatened, sparking the beginning of their feud. The tension became evident when Beyonce released her song, Bow Down. Just his little wife, don't get it twisted. Seemingly, Beyonce was conveying a message to every other female artist, including Rihanna, urging them to bow down in acknowledgement of her status as the queen. Reportedly, Rihanna responded to Beyonce's directive by writing, I only know how to be number one. I could use a challenge. How'd it feel down there on your knees? She also reposted an article declaring her as the queen of pop and captioned her post with, It's only March, people. Hash 2013 is already owned. Hash stay tuned. Following these comments, the Beehive Beyonce's fan base criticized Rihanna, interpreting the post as a direct response to Beyonce. Shortly after, Beyonce seemingly posted a subtle reply to Rihanna's post by sharing a photo of herself and her daughter Blue Ivy in matching chairs for her sold-out Mrs. Carter show. Interestingly, it's worth noting that Bow Down was originally written for Rihanna, not Beyonce. The songwriting brothers Rock City, known for penning Rihanna's hit songs like Man Down, We Can't Stop, and Replay, disclosed closed in a podcast that they crafted the song Bow Down in just nine minutes specifically for Rihanna. When Rihanna declined the song, they subsequently offered it to Beyonce. Interestingly, Beyonce provided a detailed account of the song's creation. Essentially, there have been instances of deception regarding songwriting, such as when Beyonce claimed to have written Irreplaceable, a statement refuted by Neo. Additionally, the song All Night was originally rejected by Rihanna, but picked up by Beyonce. Another source of tension between the two is Rihanna's surpassing passing record sales. Despite Beyonce's longer tenure in the industry, Rihanna stands as one of the best-selling
best-selling artists of all time, with over 250 million records sold, compared to Beyoncé's 100 million. In terms of business acumen, Rihanna has outshone Beyoncé by launching Fenty Beauty at Sephora in 2017, generating a staggering $570 million in revenue within the first 15 months. Consequently, Rihanna officially attained billionaire status in 2021, surpassing Beyoncé through her success in Fenty Beauty, clothing, and lingerie ventures. Historically, there have been indications that Beyoncé held some resentment when her husband, Jay-Z, developed an affinity for Rihanna. In 2005, with the release of Rihanna's song, Ponda Replay, Jay-Z, who had recently assumed the positions of CEO and president of Def Jam Records, took notice. Rihanna has noted this as a significant and positive moment in her career at that time. Working with Jay and having a collaboration with him is, is just one of those things that everyone dreams to do in their musical career. Subsequently, complications arose when Jay-Z was purportedly involved in making advances towards Rihanna, leading to an alleged affair. Rihanna's publicist, Jonathan, confessed in an email that they fabricated a rumor as a publicity stunt to elevate her career during a challenging period. Admitting it was a reckless decision, Jonathan acknowledged the potential danger it posed to Rihanna, stating, I agree, we were young and stupid. Jonathan speculated that the power couple might have exploited the situation for their on-the-run tour that that summer. Despite expressing regret for the impact of the rumors on individuals, especially Beyonce and Rihanna, Jonathan didn't anticipate the story's magnitude. The revelation reportedly deeply affected Jay-Z, who realized people were profiting from speculations about Beyonce. Amidst these controversies, there were claims that Jay-Z and Beyonce attempted to undermine Rihanna's career, with accusations of Jay-Z leaked Beyonce's album Formation. This leak occurred on Tidal, the streaming service owned by the Carters. In response, Rihanna took control by releasing the album herself and offering free download codes to fans, seemingly countering the alleged efforts to undercut her career. During the title press conference around the same time, an insider shed light on the behind-the-scenes dynamics, stating, they refused to stand next to each other or speak with each other. Handlers and coordinators went to great lengths to keep the divas happy. The whole show was carefully choreographed and these two had almost nothing to do with each other, the insider added. It is indeed intriguing that despite their close association with Jay-Z, Beyoncé and Rihanna have never collaborated on a song. While Beyoncé has collaborated with artists like Nicki Minaj and Megan Thee Stallion, the argument that they haven't worked together due to different brands or sounds doesn't seem convincing. Collaborations often aim to bring together artists with diverse backgrounds and merge their sounds, and both Rihanna and Beyoncé have worked with artists who have different sounds from theirs. The possibility that Beyoncé can't stand Rihanna could offer a more plausible explanation for the lack of collaboration between them. Clearly, there seem to be multiple reasons contributing to the alleged strained relationship between Beyoncé and Rihanna. Even fans think the same. One person wrote, Beyoncé built her brand for the public to see her as the queen. Meanwhile, Rihanna doesn't even have to try as hard as her since the public just really loves supporting her. Their business ventures is a testament to that. Another one added, Everything Rihanna touches is pure gold her career and her business. Rihanna is standing up on her own and she doesn't have to undermine no one else to have success proving she's brilliant. One more fan wrote, Rihanna is a very authentic, internationally known, outgoing, stylish, original, and talented woman. Rihanna's business ventures are successful rocketed her to billionaire status. Beyoncé business ventures failed House of Dorian and Ivy Park continuously tanks. Now what's more intriguing is that it has always been observed by the netizens that Beyoncé has always tried to ruin every female artist's career whose songs sell more than hers. Over the years, there has been widespread speculation about the mysterious withdrawal of Lauryn Hill from the spotlight. While some theories suggested she might have been dealing with addiction or mental health issues, a recent revelation from Lauryn Hill herself suggests a surprising twist. She claims that her career downturn was orchestrated by none other than her closest friend and collaborator, Beyonce. Young people know that it is, uh, it is not a burden to love him and to represent him. Not only this, Beyonce is also rumored to end Aaliyah's career also, and even she is reportedly involved in her death too. And Aaliyah was also rumored to be involved with Jay-Z romantically, and at the time of accident, she was pregnant also. Now the same thing happened with Blue Cantrell also. Now people have suggested that Beyonce may have controlled Jay-Z to even try to K her. Blue Cantrell was hospitalized after being discovered by police, screaming in the streets and claiming that someone had poisoned her with gas. Officers in San 
Santa Monica took the singer into custody for a psychological evaluation. TMZ reported that a witness alerted the police due to Cantrell's erratic behavior. Subsequently, she was transported to a nearby hospital for evaluation by medical staff. Cantrell has maintained a reclusive lifestyle, staying away from the media spotlight. Her last television appearance was in 2008 when she participated in NBC's Celebrity Circus. Unfortunately, she was eliminated from the competition in the second week, becoming the first celebrity to exit the show. In 2004, Blue's success slowed down massively in 2004, after leaving her contract, mainly because Arista simply forgot to renew it. It was only then that she realized that she hadn't made nearly as much money as she should have during her time at the label. Speaking to You Know I Got Soul about what she would have done differently, she said she wishes she'd have been more educated on the music business before she signed that Arista contract. I would have got my lawyer because that lawyer ended up representing them, which was a conflict of interest so they were all working together to basically take what was mine, she claimed. Nobody really knows the whole truth but me and them, but I was really taken advantage of. Elsewhere in the 2012 interview, Blue revealed where she had been for the last few years. I needed to take time off she admitted. I spent a lot of time overseas and I was living in London, and I needed a break just to take time for myself, because being an artist is a 24-7 thing, it's no sleep, no eating, and it's a lot of hard work. During that same interview in 2012, Blue hinted at a third album she had been diligently working on, confidently assuring that its release would soar straight to the top of the chart. However, for reasons not specified, the album never materialized. Some sources have suggested that Jay-Z has been allegedly involved in many artists' career ending and even controlling them and manipulating them. In a startling revelation that has sent shockwaves through the music industry, several artists have recently claimed to expose a secretive code allegedly employed by Jay-Z to wield a profound influence over the world. These artists contend that Jay-Z's extraordinary control over various facets of the industry, coupled with his impact beyond its confines, is intricately tied to a complex network of enigmatic numerical connections. While these claims may seem unconventional, they have sparked intense speculation and discussions, prompting a closer examination of the concealed dynamics that may or may not contribute to Jay-Z's apparent dominion over a wide spectrum of realms. It raises the question of whether Kanye West's cryptic references may be linked to this mysterious code. I know how to make perfect, but yeah. that's not what I'm here to yeah. do. I'm here to crack and crack the pavement. In a surprising revelation, speculation has emerged suggesting that Jay-Z might be utilizing a cryptic code embedded in numbers to convey covert messages through his music. This idea draws inspiration from an ancient method of interpreting numbers known as numerology, as well as a Jewish tradition called gematria, where letters are associated with numerical values. Through this practice, words and phrases can conceal hidden meanings based on their assigned numbers, resembling a puzzle that only a select few can decipher. And the energy that lies in the numbers that correspond to each letter. This leads us to wonder if Jay-Z, known for his catchy lyrics, is actually embedding deeper messages using these methods. The interesting part is that when Jay-Z released a song called 444, it caught the attention of many celebrities, and they started talking about it in surprised and hushed tones. This makes us question if the choice of the number 444 has a special meaning, or if it's just a random choice. All of this adds to the mystery surrounding Jay-Z's influence, not only in the music industry, but also in other aspects of the world. Then what happened? <laughs> yeah. I don't, people start calling me it. Yeah. <laughs> Jaguar Wright's perspective on Aaliyah's tragic passing introduces an intriguing angle to the ongoing discussions surrounding the event. According to her, during the time of Aaliyah's untimely death, Beyonce's solo career was encountering challenges, and she needed a breakthrough moment to propel her to superstardom. Aaliyah's unfortunate demise seemingly provided the necessary boost, ultimately leading to Beyonce earning her title as the queen of many hearts. As Aaliyah's memory gradually fades, it prompts reflection on how long individuals will continue to benefit from recurring tragedies. Some argue that accountability for any potential wrongdoing is long overdue. Even fans are commending Jaguar for her outspoken stance in defense of their beloved songstress, suggesting that it's time for justice to prevail in the name of Aaliyah. And if we talk about Blue, her most recent public appearance was in March 2020, just before the onset of the pandemic. She took the stage in London as part of Fatman Scoop's Throwback Arena Tour, sharing the spotlight with fellow artists such as Nelly, Shaggy, 
Maggie, Eve, Maya, and Salt and Pipa. Despite the hiatus in album releases, Blue remained active in the music scene through live performances and collaborations with other artists. So all these potential revelations have made people believe that Jay and Bay both may have initiated plans in order to end Blue's career. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.